Technology at Pima Community College. We are here with Hugh today to demo how to create bacterial smears using liquid and solid cultures. Before we get started, the first thing that we're going to do before any experiment in class is make sure that we have the appropriate personal protective equipment on. In our classes here at Pima Community College, we use a lab coat, gloves, safety goggles, closed toed shoes, and if you have long hair, that would be tied back as well before getting started. The next thing you want to do before you get started is now disinfect your workspace. In this case, we're going to work with the 10% bleach solution and wipe our bench space down with regular paper towels. These paper towels are not currently soiled with live bacterial organisms, so we're going to dispose of them in the regular trash. Now you're ready to collect all of the items you need to create your smears. We're going to have a test tube rack containing our bacterial cultures, a disposal rack when finished. You're also going to need glass slides, a striker for the Bunsen burner, a wax pencil, you may want your clothespins on hand, and you're also, and last but not least, going to need your metal inoculating tube. Your glass slides have to be marked in terms of the boundary where you anticipate placing your bacterial culture. You either draw two lines or draw a wax circle. You also want to be sure to write the names of the organisms on the glass slide. Staphylococcus aureus SA for short, and on the other slide, Escherichia coli EC for short. This is what your final label slide should look like. Now it's time to get your Bunsen burner set. Turn on the gas valve. Your Bunsen burner should have two blue cones. The inner cone is the hottest portion, and the portion you'll be working with. We're going to start with a broth culture of Staphylococcus aureus, and the first thing you should always do with your broths is make sure to vortex them in order to mix them. We're holding the cap down, angling the tube on the vortexer, mix for about five minutes. Take your metal inoculating loop and sterilize it by holding it through the inner cone until the length of the wire turns completely orange. Allow it to cool for a few seconds. Make sure not to wave it in the air or blow on it or touch it to your skin to cool it. Once cool, you will remove the cap of the test tube with a little finger on your dominant hand and pass the test tube through the fire. Next, dip your sterile loop into the broth to pick up the culture. Pass it through the flame one last time. Set it down. We're going to tap off any of the liquid from your culture onto the glass slide and mix it within the boundary that you mark. Be sure to sterilize your loop one more time before setting it down or before dipping into your next culture. For the solid culture, we're going to add a few drops of DI water. Alternatively, you could use tap water if you wish. And we're going to place a droplet down onto the glass slide first. Be sure to sterilize your loop before picking up your Escherichia coli culture. Repeat this process by removing the test tube cap with the little finger of your dominant hand and passing it through the flame. Scrape the top of the auger until you have a small visible chunk of cells. <laughs> Place the opening of the test tube before placing it down. Mix the chunk of bacterial cells into the droplet of water on the glass slide. Ideally, this should be a milky color. You should not see chunks of auger or chunks of bacterial cells when finished. Last but not least, make sure to sterilize your metal loop one last time before putting it down. Now we wait while our smears dry. Once they are completely 
air dry and we'll move on to the next step. Once your smears are completely air dried, the next step is to heat fix. We heat fix by using a closed pin and passing the glass slide through the flame several times. You'll notice here that what we're attempting to do is kill the bacterial cells and adhere them to the slide. So the slide should be warm but not hot to the touch. Once you're finished with your heat fix step, you're done with your Bunsen burner. And now you're ready to stain. We're going to walk you through what's called a grand stain. And we're going to first start with a chemical called crystal violet. We're going to flood the boundaries marked with the bacterial cells with the crystal violet. And we're going to wait for 60 seconds. If at this point you were to only apply the crystal violet and view under the microscope, you would essentially be doing what's called a simple stain. At that point, all of your bacterial cells will appear violet under the scope. Once your 60 seconds have passed, you're going to angle the glass slide over your stain waves and rinse with DI water. Ideally, the droplets coming off the glass slide should be clear. Repeat with your second slide. The second chemical we're going to apply is called Graham's iodine, or the mordant. Again, flood the slide where your bacteria is located, and apply the stain for no longer than 60 seconds. Assume your 60 seconds is passed. Rinse again with DI water until your droplets are clear coming off of the glass slide. The next step is the most critical step, and it's called the decolorization. You're going to apply the decolorizer, ideally until your droplets run clear off of the glass slide, usually no more than 15 seconds. Have your DI water handy. Get that decolorizer off as soon as those droplets run clear. Over decolorizing can result in gram-negative false identification. Repeat with your second slide. Have your DI water handy. And rinse off all of the decolorizer. Last but not least is the counter stain called saffronin. Again, flood the boundary where your bacterial cells are located. You're going to keep the solution in place for up to 60 seconds. Once your 60 seconds is up, once again, again angle the slide, rinse off the saffronin until the droplets run clear. Dry the glass slide by placing it between two sheets of bibulous paper and gently blotting the glass slide. Be careful, it's super easy to break it at this stage. Rinse our second slide. And again, blot dry. You have now completed a grand scene. 
you're ready to look under the microscope. At the end of our experiments, it's critical that we properly dispose of any waste generated during the lab. For gram stain waste, we're going to dispose of it in a designated gram stain bucket. Oftentimes, students will rinse the tray with the DI water and then wipe the tray down with a paper towel. Next, any test tube culture that you worked with will be disposed of in a red rack specifically for autoclaving. Glass slides, when you're finished with your microscope, are going to go in the sharps waste. If it's full, please notify your instructor. Gloves, there will be a designated bucket for glove disposal. In addition, not imaged here, would be a bucket for any solid biohazard waste, including petri plates or soiled paper towels. Wash your hands by using soap and water 20 to 30 seconds. Get in between your fingers, under your fingernails, and rinse down the drain. Paper toweling is advised. Be sure to throw these paper towels away in the regular garbage.